Asia A1R Psychic Radio here on Moonstruck TV with Amanda Hall Psychic all the way from the Gold Coast. Well, isn't it absolutely a fabulous time of the year? It's actually the beginning of the astrology year. So it's our, like a happy new year for astrology this year. The sun's just gone into Aries and everything's sparkly and exciting and new and different. And it's great to be alive when, you know, we move into these new sort of cycles with renewed energy and renewed vigor. So let's get the show underway. The, this week's Simply Tarot card of the week is the Six of Pentacles. Now, I know everybody's going to say, yippee doodle dandy, raise in money or salary. It doesn't automatically mean that our purses and our bank accounts are going to be overflowing with money. But what it means is that there's the opportunity here to maybe potentially make some extra money or have a little increase in our pay packet or maybe just, you know, find that we've got a little bit more money tucked away than what we thought we had. It's, it's a time of sort of really starting to become positive and looking at things in maybe different lights. And sometimes it's just a matter of sitting down and reorganising our budget that we find that there's a little bit of waste there that can give us a little bit of a raise in money or salary and put money to better use. So I always get excited when I see this card because to me it's a, a sign of positivity and hope and things are getting better. And if you've been really struggling with money, that things are going to start to get a little bit easier soon. So it's really, really positive card to have come out. And this is from the Simply Tarot cards that I designed back in 2003, I think it was. Now, it was a long time ago now that the Simply Tarot deck's been out worldwide. I've got some other exciting news to announce. This is my... I've been on this network now six years and it's it's just flown. It's just amazing to know that how quickly things grow and how quickly things change. I'm not going anywhere. I want to be really clear on that. I hope to be here for another 60 years, never mind another six years, but it's just so quickly how things go in six years. And I've made some really lovely friends and I've worked with loads and loads of people around the world. And I just want to say a big thank you to everybody that tunes in week after week to all of our shows here on the network, because without you people, we would and have shows so it's your participation it's your love your support that keeps this network going and enables us to do what we do best which is try and help you make some informed choices and bring some you know some positivity some love and light to people around the world so let's get on with the astrology section now we've got it's going to be like almost like Aries week this week. It's sort of the sun has just gone into Aries. As I said, it's the beginning of the astrological year. So happy birthday to all the Aries people out there. And I know quite a few I'll be reaching out to today that it's their birthday. And it's a time of the year where everything sort of starts to feel shiny and new and exciting. And we start to sort of feel as if we've got some enthusiasm back in our lives again. And it's a really positive sort of time. It is a time to take a few chances. Now, this doesn't matter what's star sign you are it's the time to get up off the couch reach out do something different try something new you know start to sort of walk with a little bit more confidence in your step and sort of you know talk in a way that you are confident about the things that you want to change or the things that you're trying to bring into your life or if you're going into a meeting go in there and put your best foot forward so we're going to start the astrological forecast now Aries obviously the sun's in Aries and you know it's a very bright positive time so the sun is actually conjunct or holding hands the moon and the moon is actually conjunct or holding hands Mercury so what does this mean particularly for Aries people followed by Librans Leos and Sagittarius it then filters down a, to be a lot more watered down for the rest of the remaining signs. But it means that we need to be very aware, particularly over these next 24, 48 hours, that your conversations that you're going to have, which may be emotionally charged, make sure that they're not fiery and outspoken and being dictatorial or me first or being sort of bossy and bombastic. Make sure if you've got to get your point across with some sort of vigor, that you do it in a in a nice way. Don't do it in an aggressive sort of manner that you make everybody sort of feel as if you're donging them on the head with a piece of 4B2 timber. Make sure that, you know, you can come in strong, you can come in forceful, but you can do it in a kind and gentle way at the same time. So it's really, really important because this next 48 hours, people could go into conflicts, things that aren't going to be easily fixed if you go in in a combative way, but make sure that you're not being bombastic with it, you, you know, that you go in in a nice, positive, 
upbeat sort of manner, but don't go in defensive or aggressive because people will pick up on that straight away. We also have sitting in the sign of Aries, we have the part of fortune, which is one of the Arabian parts. Now it's not where you find your fortune. It's just saying that things are certainly on an upward swing, particularly for those Aries people that have been working hard on trying to sort out their emotions or dealing with their physical health because we've had Chiron sitting in Aries now for some time. So he's been asking all Aries people and particularly any other fire sign or Librans to really look at the emotional issues in their life. Is there something emotionally that's causing physical damage in their body or causing their, their physical ailments to be worse because they've got an emotional blockage or some situation that they haven't dealt with? Now is the time to hit it head on. And sometimes it's just a matter of acknowledging the fact that something terrible happened in your life or something that you didn't expect to happen and it left an emotional scar on you. Sometimes by just hitting it head on and saying, okay, I can't change this, but I can choose to not allow it to dominate me or interfere in my life anymore. I learnt the lessons, whatever they were out of that, good, bad or indifferent. Now I'm going to put you to one side. You're no longer going to interfere or dominate my life again. And by doing that, then you open up the opportunities of what Jupiter is trying to bring in because Jupiter is holding hands with Chiron and the part of fortune and saying, once we can you know, jump over these emotional blocks or put them where they belong, don't give them any air. You know, you've acknowledged them. You've said, okay, I've learned everything I can possibly learn from that. I've looked at it from every angle. Now you can go away in the cupboard or the closet because I no longer need you. You don't need any oxygen. And now I can start to move forward in my life in a very, very positive way. Aries people in the next few months have got golden opportunities landing on their doorstep. It's up to them to sort of actively sort of get up off the couch and make these things a reality. You know, opportunity only knocks once. It doesn't knock two or three or 10 times. So if opportunity starts to knock, don't shut the door in its face. Get up and explore it and do something about it. Not every opportunity that comes your way will be the opportunity that you want. But, you know, it's, it's an opportunity to explore and see where things are going. So for the rest of the signs, there's, there is opportunities coming from most of the signs this year. It's about sort of, being in the right place at the right time, but it's also about understanding what it is that you want to achieve. For many people, they're still in a state of, not so much turmoil, but a state of, I'm restless. I don't know what I want next. You know, we went through the pandemic, we've come out the other side, hopefully. I say hopefully because I still don't believe it's quite over yet, but we all made a lot of changes during that time. Most of us realised that sort of family and friends were much, much more important than killing yourself, making a lot of money. So there was a big transition there, some big shifts. People sort of, you know, spent a lot of time playing board games and doing things they hadn't done for a long time and all of a sudden started to learn a lot more about themselves. And for some people that wasn't particularly a pleasant time in as much it was the first time they'd still would still long enough to have a good long hard look at themselves and didn't actually like what they saw in the mirror. So they started to work towards making changes and making changes for the better in their lives and bringing their life more into balance. Well now we've got that to a certain point, it's now it's like what's next? You know, uh, things are starting to sort of ramp up, but people are starting to ramp up and wanting to earn money again or bigger amounts of money so that they can travel or, you know, make home improvements or whatever the case may be. And they feel they've got the balance right, but it's like, but what's next? So my suggestion is, is wait until it becomes urgent. Look at everything very, very carefully. Don't make a rash decision, but when it becomes past the point that you can't shove it down your throat any further, that it becomes urgent, then that's the time to make decisions if opportunities arise. Other than that, just have a good look around. It's like going to the market and having a browse to see what you might want to eat for dinner. Have a little browse and see what's happening in your life. Venus, the planet of love and affection, and the things that we love to do is sitting in Taurus at the moment. Venus is the, the planet that rules Taurus, so it's very, very comfortable being there. It's asking everybody to stop and smell the roses, smell the coffee, you know, have bring a little bit of beauty into your life. And, and for those people that are seeking a new love relationship that may not have been in one for a while, it's the perfect time to attract love at the moment because you will attract somebody that is very stable, somebody that will bring 
life to you in a very beautiful sort of way and maybe be a very different type of relationship to what you've attracted in the past, which is probably a good thing because if they were past relationships and didn't work, they didn't work for a reason. It's a more sort of grown up type of relationship, I suppose, is what I'm seeing here with Venus at the moment. It's sort of like Venus is sort of saying, yes, it's nice to have all the the, the heady times and the giddy legs and all those sort of things. But we also need to look past that very early stages of a relationship for something more solid, something that we can bank on, something that we can build upon, somebody that has the same principles as us, that believes in the same sort of things. And we have a lot more things in common. We also have Mars, the planet of action, sitting in Gemini. So Mars is sort of, you know, stirring up conversations around the world, particularly in high places. So be aware of that. It also trickles down to us mere mortals that some of the conversations we're going to have over this next week may not necessarily be pleasant and not necessarily is everybody listening to what we've got to say either. So just be aware of that. There could be a few frayed tempers around the place. And also to wrap up the astrology section, we still have Pluto sitting in Capricorn in his last 12 months there. So we're going to start to see Pluto really start to kick in now. We're going to start to see world leaders and things like that, you know, get a bit of a push and a shove and here, there and everywhere. And everybody's got to really sort of stand up and say what they truly believe in now. They won't be able to get away with things like they did before. So we're going to take our first caller, which is Kendra in Essex in England. Are you there, Kendra? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Thanks. Do you have a question I can answer uh, for you, Kendra? Uh, no, just for a general, please. I'm having trouble hearing you, sweetie. Can you talk up just a little bit? Yeah, just general, please. Oh, general. Yes, certainly, Kendra. Yes, I can do that for you. Sorry. Really, really Sorry. interesting. Because the first thing that springs to mind here, Kendra, that they're showing me for you is that it's like I've got a bunch of flowers that just keep popping up everywhere. It's like they're just popping up from everywhere. So to me, that sort of says that there's going to be a number of new things that are going to start popping up in your life quite quickly. And you need to be ready to be able to sort of make decisions fairly quickly. Decisions are going to need to be made almost like thinking on your feet. Someone says, would you like to do this? It's either yes or no. There's... With yes. these new opportunities, I'm going to say there will be a couple there that I'm going to say that your first gut feeling will be, hang on a minute, I don't know that I like that. I don't know whether that's for me. I want you to be very aware of that. If something gives you a sort of an uncomfortable feeling or you feel this is not right, then sort of even if you don't feel comfortable to say no outright, say, look, just give me some time to think about it. Give yourself that little bit of luxury of time to go away, think about it, look at it, come back to it and sort of say, yes or no, this is right for me. Not everything that's presented to you, Kendra, do you have to take. It's a time of choice. It's a time where you can turn around and be a little bit selfish and a little bit self-absorbed and say, gee, that's not quite right. I was hoping for a bit more. I was hoping for something better and wait for that sort of something better. Have you just moved house, Kendra? No, I want to move house. Okay. Well, they were showing me I'm definitely wondering, a yeah, move. Wondering. Move was there. There's definitely a move there. And they were showing it to me as if it was in the past tense. Now, when they do that and you haven't actually physically moved, it means it's the next thing to happen. It's the next most important major thing to happen. And it can't be very far away because it's already showing it to me as if it's already happened. So that's a good thing. Right behind the move, was also an improvement in finances. Now, I'm not sure whether that means because the next place is going to be cheaper to move into or whether it just means that, you know, because of the move, your life is starting to settle down and sort out more. But there seemed to be in your hand a little bit more money each week for you to be able to do the things that you need to do. I felt this last five years in particular, Kendra, had been really tight on the financial side. Is that how you saw it? That, it, yeah. you know, you didn't seem to be able to get a run on? Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. Well, things are definitely going to improve with this move. I'm going to say you're going to have a purse full of money the first week. But what I'm saying is things just generally seem to be getting easier, better. There'll be more money around you. You'll have some money for some luxury things that you haven't been able to do for some time. But more importantly, besides the move and the, you know, the extra money that's going to be floating around, I feel you're going to feel so much happier in yourself. It's like this next move is it's like I can put down roots. It's like, oh, I'm home. 
it's so nice because I feel as if you've been so stressed for so long, Kendra, it's going to be nice to be able to sort of exhale and just relax and just sort of do the things that other people take for granted in their lives. You haven't been able to do that because you've been on sort of almost like high alert for such a long time. Has there been a number of things in the family that you've had to be very heavily involved in, has there? Yes, yeah, that's totally Yeah. So... That seems to be getting less now, Kendra. It's sort of, I'm not saying people are less needy. I'm just saying things are starting to to level out a lot more where you're going to be able to, to put the emphasis back on you and what your needs are again. Yeah. Is there or was there somebody that, that passed away in the last 12 months, Kendra, a female? A uh, female of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, i am just got a female. She didn't sort of say to me where she was from or who she was, whether she was a family member or a friend. She just showed me that she hadn't been there very long. Well, she was sending her love and her blessings. So I don't know what that means in as much as I can't tie it to a particular. My son lost the baby and I think it was a girl. I don't know that. Okay. All right. Well, love and blessings were coming from this person that passed and that was supposed to be a very special message for you anyway kendra that's where we're going to leave it i wish you well i know your new house move is going to be the, the the most amazing thing that's happened in a very very long time for you and it's well deserved anyway we're going to talk with Anne Boleyn in tomb ball in texas in the usa are you there Anne Boleyn? yes how are you very well thank you sweetie do you have a question i can answer for you um, yes, ma'am. Are you a medium by chance? I am. It just depends with such a short space of time that we have on the show here, whether or not they want to come through. My suggestion is fire a question at me. If they want to chime in from the other side, they will. And at least then that way we've got some sort of message to give you. Um, let's just ask a general question of where the next mm -hmm. six months looks. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Certainly. Okay, first thing that they're sharing with me is the fact that you've got a number of endings, changes and transformations coming up, but I'm also going to say to you that I don't feel that you are selfish enough. You don't seem to put yourself first enough, do you, Amberly? Not much. No, well, that's, that's got to be your homework. I want to see you start practising, trying to put your needs above everybody else's because if we can get your needs satisfied and get you on the right path for the things that you need to be achieving for yourself, then it'll overflow into other areas of your life. You know, the other people that are important around you because your part of the, the equation is sorted. You know what I mean? That we're putting you first and then there'll be a ripple effect in that way. Yes. Has there been some really major changes in the last six months around you? Has there been a lot of people that have moved or changed or changed jobs or something? There just seems to be, everybody seems to have been going every which way lately around you. And you seem to be the one that you felt you were missing out. You weren't moving as fast as them. Um, similar. There's been a lot of change in the last, I would say, three months. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but there seem to be a lot of people around you, whether they were family or whether they were friends or just people in the neighbourhood, there just seemed to be this flurry of activity and your personal activity didn't match theirs. But I was going to say, but yours was more important because what changes you had and what you're instigating now are going to be what I term as more lifelong changes. You know, you weren't just doing it just for the sake of change. Yours were deliberate and strategized and, and in the right sort of situation. Is there a dark-headed young man in your life now, someone special? Say that again. Love Is there a dark-headed man interest. in your life, a love interest, your husband, your partner? Um, yeah, I have a partner. Right. Okay. Does he, he have brown lighter, hair? lighter. It's brown. It's like a light brown. Yeah. Yeah. It's not blonde like mine. Say that again. Yeah. I said he's not blonde. He's got brown hair. Okay. Massive yeah, change coming up for him. Okay. Massive change coming up for him. Has he been looking for another job or has he been looking for a promotion? No, an elevation we actually own our own business. 
right? But is, is has he been trying to pull off some big deal? Because to me, there was a sort of like an upliftment there with the work. Yeah, there's, there, something there's a big project online, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, there should be some very, very good news about that in the next week to 10 days because I can see him being really happy, but then at the same time saying, well, there's a lot of work to be done now and it's sort of, but this is sort of, they showed it to me like a promotion. Now, if you're self-employed, mm -hmm. that to me then says it's like taking the business to the next level. Do you know what I mean? It's not just a one-off thing. This will actually elevate the business up to the next level and be consistent. So that's a good thing because I think you've both worked pretty hard to get it to that level, but never thought maybe this was going to be sustainable with what's coming through now. It will be, and it's good. So... Is it the business you <laughs> Is it the business that you're moving premises or you? Um, no, we're not. We're not moving premises. Um, we're uh -huh. just. Uh, I mean, we're definitely on the track of trying to elevate it. Like we've built it to what it is now, and then mm -hmm. this job offer that's coming in would definitely elevate our business to put us on a new level of achievement mm -hmm. and you know, and the jobs that would be coming from that and things like that. Yeah, I, I, but I see that as ongoing. I see that as sustainable. But they were showing me, and I wasn't sure whether it meant the business was moving or you guys were personally moving house, but around yeah. August this year, you know, this may not even be on the table yet for you guys, but around August this year, there's going to be an opportunity and I'm, they're not clearly showing it to me, whether it's the business or whether it's home or whether it's a combination of both, but there will be something big that will come that could mean a expansion or, a, you know, a movement of something. I, my first thought was the relocation of the business to maybe bigger premises or needing to have a second location. building. Yeah, a second mm -hmm. location. That was how I first saw it. But then at the same time, they said to me, but what about the house? And I thought, well, what about the house? You know, like <laughs> I didn't feel it was like we were going to move house at the same time as well. But maybe it's just because we get this sorted that then we look at that, okay, then in time we can look about, you know, whether we want to extend the house or maybe do we want a new one or whatever. I mean, I think it was just trying, they were trying to show me from the other side, things are moving so quickly and there's so much opportunity there that don't just limit it to sort of small time thinking. Do you know what I mean? It's okay to have some big dreams because those big mm -hmm. dreams could, could happen quite quickly. And you sort of need to be sort of a little bit prepared. I mean, you know, with this new opportunity with the business, if this really takes off the way that they were showing me and you say, for instance, needed a second location, that's a hell of a jump from where we are now. You know what I mean? To right. be looking at in five months' time to thinking possibly we could need a second location before too long. So they're pretty big steps. So, you know, they're the sort of things that I'm not saying go out and, you know, find another building just yet, but, you know, have these things in the back of your mind, you know, let your mind wander there and start to make some preliminary plans if that was to happen, how would we tackle it? You know what I mean? So it's right. not such a big thing at the time when it happens, but the other thing they were showing me around this, and I'm not sure that it ties in with what you know about at the moment with the business, but I was also seeing the potential of some really big, what I would term as government contracts as well. But I felt that was separate from what's already on the table. Yeah, I, I don't know. No, but that was another, another layer that they showed me with this. And I think what they're trying to show me from the other side is that there's anything is possible at the moment. There's a lot of things that are about to come in and you need to be open to whatever's presented. You don't have to take it all, but you have to have an open mind to at least explore it, look at it and, you know, give it merit and then say yes or no to it. So there's opportunities. I mean, when they show me things like government contracts, Amberlyn, that usually means if it's not necessarily an official government contract, it's as good as, which means, you know, the money's as good as the government. Do you know what I mean? It's guaranteed, it's mm -hmm. rock solid, it's, 
it's something that's going to go on for a long time. It's not a flash in the pan sort of thing. So sometimes they use symbology like that so that I can explain it to you and you can understand it. So don't necessarily think, oh, but Amanda said it was a government contract. If it's not a government thing, but it's as good as, that's that's okay. You know, it's just how they've shown me the symbology so I can share it with you. So. I feel that, you know, you and your partner are really on the right track as far as where the business is going. Personally, I think there needs to be a little bit more, more work on your relationship. I think both of you have sort of just been so focused on so many other things. There hasn't been enough time to be a couple. And we have to make that a little bit of a priority too. You know, you need some couple time as well. And even if it's yes, just a yeah. picnic in the park, you know, like do some simple, spontaneous little things that put a bit of sparkle back in the relationship. Right. But overall, I think everything's going well. And it's it's interesting because you've got a lot of people on the other side that were sort of, they were all coming in thick and fast that I couldn't stop and sort of ask them who they were and where they were from, that there's a lot of people helping you from the other side at the moment to make these things a reality. So, you know, if you get up in the morning and you feel like you've run a marathon overnight, you probably have because they've had you working all night with them. Anyway, <laughs> that's where we're going to leave Anne Boleyn now. We've come to the end of the show. And again, I want to say thank you very much for being with me for the last six years. I'm not going anywhere. I'll be back again next week. It's been an absolute pleasure to sort of work with people all around the world as we do each and every week and the show has grown and evolved over the years with me and and different things that I present and you know the things that you've sort of written to me and told me that were popular the things that you liked and that's why the astrology section became more of an important part and integral part than it was at the very beginning and it's nice to have those sort of things and I get lots of messages in my inbox about everybody likes the songs that I pick each week that you know some songs they've never heard of and some of their favorites and this week I want to leave you with one of Motown's probably greatest finest singers and I know a lot of people sort of look at me and say oh yeah she only likes David Cassidy and she likes John Farnham and that but my actual favorite music is actually Motown music those three things I'm a really big huge fan of the Motown music and one of my favorite singers out of Motown is Diana Ross and I want to leave you with one of my favorite, ultimate favorite songs of hers, and it's called Ain't No Mountain High Enough. I think it's just almost like a gospel song to me. You know, you hear that song and you just automatically feel uplifted. So I want to leave you with that uplifting feeling this week, and we'll see you again next week. Bye for now.